Hello and welcome to Easton News. I'm Joe Taft. And I'm Jack Ryan. Today is Friday, September 22nd, 2023. The Massachusetts Department of Health announced on September 20th that a West Nile virus has been detected in mosquitoes collected from Easton, Massachusetts. This is the fourth West Nile virus that has been detected in mosquitoes collected from Easton. The species of mosquitoes that tested positive is primarily a bird biting mosquito and will also bite mammals. The current risk level for the town of Easton remains at moderate. West Nile virus is most commonly transmitted to humans by the of an infected mosquito by taking a few common sense precautions people can help to protect themselves and their loved ones apply insect repellent clothing can help reduce mosquito bites be aware of peak mosquito hours the hours from dusk till dawn are peak biting times for many mosquitoes mosquito proof your home drain standing water and instill or repair screens on doors and windows Fact sheets on West Nile virus and reducing exposure and risk are available on the town's website and the Easton Health Department office, 136 Elm Street in Easton, Mass, 02356. The Borderland is having a murder mystery inside the Ames Mansion. Their popular annual murder mystery will be on Saturday, October 14th at 6 p.m. The tickets will go on sale Friday, September 15th. Space for this event is very limited, so once they're sold out, they're not going to be adding any extra tickets. So get your tickets sooner than later. Tickets are $100 per person. Friends of Borderland membership will get 15% off though. There will be light refreshments. This is a 21 and up event. IDs will be checked at the door. So to purchase tickets, a link will go through the Borderland's Facebook page. The Town of Stoughton Substance Abuse Prevention Department is currently looking for Easton High students to join their team and to help them support with youth in the region of Stoughton, Easton, Avon, and Norwood. They will be responsible for implementing interviews, research, and activities that focus on substance prevention in young people. To apply, follow, go to the Town of Stoughton website under jobs. The Town of Easton is undertaking a crucial public safety and public works facilities replacement project to enhance essential services for the community. The project involves constructing a new combined DPW facility, police and fire headquarters, and fire substation, consolidating multiple outdated buildings. Uh, with facilities ranging from 50 to 70 plus years old, these structures no longer meet various health and safety and environmental codes and are beyond their useful lives. So there will be a community forum and facilities tour on October 2nd, 2023 at 6.30 at the police and fire at 46 slash 48 Lothrop Street. The special town meeting will be October 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. at Oliver Ames, and the debt exclusion election will be November 4th, 2023, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. also at Oliver Ames. <clears throat> Please visit www.eastonpsw.com to learn more about the project. Sign up for notifications of project updates and share your feedback. The DPW held their open house and forum this past week. And we caught up with DPW director David Fields to learn more about the project. This is our shop floor. Uh, as Connor said, this was built in 1952. The other locations we have are the Water Division building at 417 Bay Road. That's an old schoolhouse. And we also use the wood shop um, by the town pool that was built in 1883. We have buildings everywhere. There's, there's a total of 19 different buildings and structures at DPW. The big deficiencies we have here are it's, it's too small. Um, our trucks uh, with 12 foot plows barely fit for the door. There's just not enough room for our guys to work. So uh, safety is the biggest issue we have. Uh, employee safety and environmental safety. Okay, just mind your step. There's a lot of, a lot of hazards. This is my uh, building's foreman's office. So it's basically a storage closet. Yeah. This is our sign shed. So this is where we do all, we have no room, like we don't have a separate workshop inside for our sign technician, where we store our signs, we make signs, cut posts, done in here. There's not even a real a way to get up here uh, that's, that's safe at all. So again, one of the needs we have is a consolidated building that has room for all our employees to work safely. Okay, to 60,000 square feet, that would be enough? Uh, it's, it's, it will be a lot better than we have, and it will, with the mezzanines and the storage, uh, it should be, it should work for us. We'll have a canopy area outside as well, where we can store some things under cover. Um, but yeah, 61,000 feet is a, is a big building. I think the initial was a little bigger, but we have to be realistic about what we can get. So uh, 61,000 will suit our needs. Our guys do a great job with what they have, uh, but we have stuff everywhere. We have chainsaws stored on the floor because there's no room. That's where we sharpen all the blades. We have storage chock full everywhere. We make 
the best of what we can in this facility, but uh, it's definitely too small and it's, it's dangerous for employees to, to work in it. The House of Possibilities is looking for a select athletes to join the Hope in running the Boston Marathon. If you think you have what it takes and a passion for Hope's mission, apply to join the team and go to houseofpossibilities.org, go to the News and Events tab. For questions, email Paul McLaughlin at pmclaughlin at houseofpossibilities.org. The OA Boys Soccer Team will be holding a car wash on September 23rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Center School in Easton. The Holy Cross Family Ministries will have a first-class relic of St. Andre Bassett on September 30th. This is a rare opportunity for local families. Bring your family and friends for this rare opportunity to pray before a first-class relic, a piece of St. Andre's heart. The event begins at 2 p.m. with an exposition of the relic, followed by a brief talk, Eucharistic Adoration, Sunday Vigil, Healing Class at 4 p.m., and closes with the ven veneration of relic and amp, anointing with the oil and St. Joseph. The event is free and open to the public. Join St. Joseph Chapel on the campus of the Father Peyton Center, 500 Washington Street in Northeastern Mass, 02356. For more info, you can call 508-238-4095 or you can visit www.familyrosary.org. The Easton Children's Museum is having a Something Wild Gala. On September 23rd, the Children's Museum will be having a gala to raise money for an update to their outside garden area, the Wild Place. The gala will help fund new playground equipment and the layout of the area. So the event will be held at Stonehill College, and there is a silent auction that will also be happening. For tickets or more information, visit the Children's Museum website or visit the front desk at the museum. Do you know an Eastern resident or an organization that benefits the community? Do you or someone you know have a special talent or a skill set that you would like to show off to your community? Well, ECAD has numerous shows and segments that may be a good fit for you. ECAD has always represented the talent and diversity of the people of Easton, and we want to highlight you. Email info at eastoncat.org to let us know what you want to see on our channels. We want to hear from you. Join your Easton Youth Baseball League friends and support the league by playing in the 2023 EYBL Mark Peterson Memorial Golf Tournament. On Sunday, October 1st at the Easton Country Club. Foursomes are $500, singles are $125, singles and youth $175, and banquet is only $25 for adults and $15 for the youth. So full registration includes entry into the 18th hole, scramble format golf, and a ticket to the banquet. There will be uh, on-course events and various raffles. So for more information, contact Nate Crossman at ncrossman15 at gmail.com. The Town of Easton offers many tax exemptions designed to reduce the property tax burden for elderly or disabled veterans. These exemptions include Elderly Clause 41D, Clause 22, and Disabled Veterans Clause 22D Surviving Spouse, Clause 37 Blind, Community Preservation. You can find the applications and the instructions on the assessor's webpage. Scroll down to the dark blue box at the end and select Real Estate Exemptions. You will see a drop-down menu listing all real estate applications. If you have any questions, please contact the Assessor's Office at 508-230-0520. Open mics at Mockingbird Music are back after three years. Each open mic will have a guest host, an amazing teacher or teachers, or a local performing musician. Mockingbird Music offers a unique opportunity to perform on stage with, with house sound, Come play as a solo, duo, trio, or even a full band. Mockingbird is the perfect place for performers of all levels. This series of open mics is intended for live music, no backing tracks, originals, and covers. So come on out and share your music in a truly amazing, supportive music community. Mockingbird Music is located at 25 Robert Drive, Southeastern Mass. There will be a $5 cover charge, and this will be continuing with the first Sunday of the month going forward. Calling all bottle caps, the Disabled American Veterans Chapter 57 Club with the Legions of Easton is collecting clear white bottle caps. The collection of the bottle caps will be recycled into prosthetics for fellow veterans. You can bring your bottle caps to the Bristol Trinity Episcopal Church, 143 Lincoln Street in North Easton. The container will be located near the main entrance and the collection will end on October 31st, 2023. Frothingham Hall has put out their fall brochure. Make sure you check out all the programs available. All are open to the public and for a variety of ages, but some require a fee to participate. To access the registration site, go to easton.ma.us and click the Leisure and Attractions tab found on the top banner. Then click Community Programs. From there, select Register for Community Programs on the sidebar. 
or click the rec desk button below. The Stonehill Skyhawks have a couple of programs in the brochure. They are having a golf clinic for four to six years olds and a sports clinic for seven to 12 year olds. Registrations are open now and they both have max numbers. They will both be on Wednesday starting October 11th. To sign up or for more info, register through Frolingham Hall, easton.ma.us. Click the rec desk button from the register or for community programs. It's that time of year. Get ready to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the NRT's Harvest and Craft Fair on Sunday, October 1st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Join NRT and the community for a celebration of all things fall. Food, music, crafts, artisans, games, animals, and more. Visit the NRT website online at nrtofeaston.org. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for updates about all things Harvest Fair. After the break, find out who is this week's Pet of the Week. And OA Sports have kicked off. We have some recaps for you. You're watching Easton News. Hi, sports fans. Easton Community Access Television, that's ECAD, your place for all of Ames high school sports. How about football, hockey, basketball, soccer, gymnastics, swimming, wrestling, lacrosse, field hockey, and more? Join us on Comcast 97 and Verizon Channel 23. Hey, thanks for having us. We're here at Auntie Sasa's Fiberworks, and uh, this weekend we're celebrating the Cape and South Shore Yarn Hall. It's usually the second or third week of every September, and we're nine shops collaborating from Harwich all the way up to Easton. Today's our last day, and we have Laurie Landerholm, who's here with the uh, Love for Lindley Foundation, and we're doing indigo dyeing, uh, making tie-dye bags, and we're here till four if you want to come on down. And I'm going to give the mic to Lori so she can tell you about the foundation. Hi there, I'm Lori Landerholm. Um, I started Lindigo a few years ago when my niece Lindley passed away from pediatric brain cancer. And I started this as a way to raise money for the Love for Lindley Foundation, which donates money to um, families in similar situations. And today we're here doing indigo dyeing. So you can bring your own t-shirt and try indigo dyeing for yourself or you can buy some of the stuff I've made already and it's a beautiful day out here. I'm happy to be at Auntie Zaza's. Did you know that the town of Easton offers free blood pressure clinics every Wednesday? Easton paramedics will be on hand at Frothingham Hall between 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. and Parkingham, Parker Terrace Community Center between 12.30 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. This is a free drop-in service and there are no appointments required. Shaw's is having a Give Back Where It Counts reusable bag program. This program is dedicated to supporting the communities we call home. For every $2.99 reusable Give Back bag sold the Easton Shaw's in September, $1 will be donated to the Easton Council on Aging. This is a great way to give back to the community while protecting the environment. When you visit the Easton Shaw's in September, look for the white reusable bags that say, I give back where it counts, locally, to support your Easton Council on Aging. The Are You OK free telephone calling service provides peace of mind both for the individual and their family. The program provides reliable, daily phone assurance and the security a person may need to maintain their independence. The program is designed for senior, disabled persons, and shut-ins living in Bristol County. The Bristol County Sheriff's Department will make a telephone call to an individual's home at approximately the same time each day. If no one answers, the Sheriff's Department will call back shortly. If no one answers the second time, the Police Department will be called immediately to check on the individual's status. Enroll at 508-994-8932 or toll free at 888-809-8932. The Eastern Youth Baseball and Youth Football is joining forces for and hosting the first annual kickball tournament fundraiser. The event will be held on November 11th at Militia Park. It's $40 a player and you must register in teams of six. More info and registration will be opening soon. Veteran Service Officer Corey Honan will be leaving office and moving to become Chief Engagement Officer for the Executive Office of Veterans Affairs at the state level. Corey has served five and a half years for the town of Easton, and ECAD is happy to work alongside him, and we wish him the best of luck in his new adventure. Now it's time for the APCSM Pet of the Week. We have a couple pets that need their forever home. This week we have Buddy and Muffy. <laughs> Meet Buddy. Buddy is a fun-loving adult pit bull terrier who is looking for his forever home. Buddy is looking for a home where he can be a dog's dog. He would make a wonderful companion for someone who is looking to throw the ball around in the backyard or hang out on the couch. Buddy likes to talk and can get pretty excitable. He loves his walks, stuffed toys, and just curling up in a comfy spot for quiet time. Dogs like Buddy tend to spend a very long time waiting in a shelter for a home. 
If Buddy sounds like a good fit for you or someone you know, please share his story or fill out a dog adoption application on our website, apcsm.org. This is Muffy. Muffy is a sweet girl who just needs a tiny bit of time to warm up to her new home. When she loves, she loves deeply. Muffy lost her person when they passed away. She feels lost herself and is looking for someone to be her best friend. Muffy is a sweet girl and promises to make her new person very happy. If you are interested in adopting Muffy, please fill out an animal adoption application on apcsm.org. Effective May 1st through November 1st, Phase 3 water restriction will be in place. So from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., houses will be restricted on what days they can use water. These restrictions are needed to comply with the town's water withdrawal permit and to ensure adequate supply during the construction of the PFAS and iron and manganese treatment facilities. Please visit the Easton Water Division webpage for more information. The Family Rosary Annual Rosary Festival will be held on the evening of October 7th at 6 p.m. It includes a radiant and inspiring outdoor candlelit rosary procession for all ages, led by priests from the Congregation of Holy Cross. Prayer will be followed by seasonal treats of cider and donuts. This is a free event for families at the Father Payton Center, 518 Washington Street in Northeastern Massachusetts, 02356. The Shoveltown Cultural District hosted an end of summer music festival in front of the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. They had plenty of music performances and the rest of the neighborhood joined in on the fun. So let's take a look. We here on this great event today. We were, um, we were blessed with beautiful weather. Uh, we have five bands, food trucks, beverages, all kinds of fun things for the family. So the cultural district brings together arts and culture for the community. And we appreciate all the support and the support of ECAT, of course. Well, this one is because of a cancellation. Uh, each year there's the, um, the Legacy Festival at the Governor uh, Al Rames Estate, the Trustees of Reservations property, and that had to be cancelled because they weren't sure of the construction schedule going on around the, what was the house. But we shall be back there, you know, next, uh, next fall. So this, this was just serendipity was cancelled and this was, I think, a very good idea that the Cultural District, it's the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District, uh, came up with. And of course we love it because more people see the hall, they identify it with having a nice time and you know and it's it suits itself to music. So it's all it's all this is one of the best days in my 44 years with the hall. Okay. Really it's the weather, it's the music, it's the people turning out. It's just phenomenal. We have events like this now in Easton which we didn't used to have, yeah. you know, uh, thanks to the cultural district and Oak Ames Hall and Everybody who participates, uh, that's what draws me to do it, is playing nice music for these nice people from my nice town. Yeah, so we love interacting with the community, doing everything we can to help out. Always love to go out and support all of the events. Um, we just love the Easton people. So we're right out of Sharon, so it's local. Um, and Easton's fun to come to. <laughs> it's been really great because there's a lot of people that have said, oh, I've always wanted to stop by, and then here they are. So it's it's been a nice excuse for them to come in and browse. And yeah, we're out here just so people can get to know us because a lot of people don't really know about um, this uh, gallery. And we're, we're open only on Saturdays and Sundays, which that can be a problem, but um, we're just getting the word out there and um, hoping people will come by and see what we've got. It's all oh fun. yeah, no, no, it, it is really going the direction of performance and getting music and, and there's a summer series that you guys covered every every performance, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we've really found a niche there to how to reach out and make be more visible. That's the trouble, is yeah. getting yourself known. I mean, I've had people come by, drive by and they stop and say, no, I've seen this building for 20 years and I don't know what it is. Yeah. So so hopefully we're trying to get rid of that. And, uh, you know, it's slowly working. We're very gratified to see these turnouts. So and thank you for, for publicizing them on ECAT. Your seven day forecast still to come. NOA Sports were in full swing this week. You're watching Easton News. Hi, I'm Ron Van Dam. I've been in radio for three decades now and have been doing a daily podcast style show for a few years. But once a week, I come to the ECAT studio where they give me wine and cheese. Hey, welcome to the program. How are you? Good to be with you. Hey, you're looking good today. Thanks for being here. Make yourself comfortable. This won't take too long. It'll be a little bit painful for you, but in the long run, it's important for you to go through this. And I do a TV version of the podcast. I talk about what's going on in the world and in the area and give my opinions on things. Uh, that's both... Uh, something to look forward to and also a warning. 
So tune in to see me move my mouth while I talk. Who knows? We might have something in common. Probably not, but you never know. Uh, uh. Catch my show here, The Ron Van Dam Show, right here on ECAT. It's The Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird if you like that sort of thing. All right, guys. Here is your upcoming seven-day weather forecast. This is your ECAT Weekly Weather Forecast. This past week we had dry, cooler weather, but some things change. This weekend we have a couple of rounds of rain. Saturday midday to evening we'll have one period of rain that could deliver about an inch of rain. Then on Sunday morning time we'll start with rain showers and then clearing up in the evening. Then it clears for the work week and we're back to dry weather and cool temps. The weekend has another period of rain that the timing isn't great, but we do go into another dry period after. I'm Adam Carrero and this has been your ECAT Weekly Weather Forecast. The Ames Free Library is creating a long-range strategic plan. The library would like the Easton community to envision the library five years in the future and help them prioritize library needs and values. All responses are confidential but will be used to help design future library programs and services. The survey consists of the series of questions about the library's collection and services and it will not take more than 10 minutes. It will be available until the end of September 2023. Just go to the Ames Free Library website and follow the prompts. The APCSM is having a Dogtoberfest. On October 21st, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., they will be having local brewery tasting, food, and their amazing, famous bake sale, music, and games. Dogs are welcome, and humans must be 21 or older. Tickets go on sale on August 19th and can be purchased at apcsm.org slash dogtoberfest. This event will be held at the AP APCSM location. The Tricentennial Committee is looking for volunteers to help out in several areas. If you would like to help out Easton celebrate their 300th celebration, you can email easton300 at outlook.com. Borderland State Park, fall closing hours. Borderland opens daily at 8 a.m. Starting Friday, September 1st, the park will close at 7 p.m. Sunday, October 1st, closing time will change to 6 p.m. And starting Sunday, November 5th, the park will close at 4 p.m. The Easton Historical Society had a ceremony to honor the Williams family in the dedication of a shed that will be used by the Historical Society. We meet up with the Jonathan Co. to talk about the dedication. Uh, good afternoon. This is Jonathan Co. with the Easton Historical Society, uh, welcoming all our members today for an open house. It's a members only open house uh, where we're having a recognition uh, today for our members that have been with us for a long time. And also, this is a great day to recognize the Lee and Kevin Williams family. Uh, they've been great, great supporters uh, and uh, uh, great donations for many things that uh, you'll see inside of the museum. Uh, I will show you our new colonial, uh, we call it the Williams Colonial Shed. Uh, it was just donated by uh, uh, the Lee and Kevin Williams family. Uh, so very, very exciting day today. Uh, there's also a nice concert at the Oaks Ames Hall as well. Uh, so we're open uh, this afternoon and uh, we've got some great, great gifts for our members that are coming in. Uh, we've got a brand new badge. Our members are uh, uh, very proud uh, to be a, a member at the Eastern Historical Society Museum. And we get a free gift, our new uh, A Glimpse of the Past uh, booklet is out for our members. Uh, so I want to welcome you today. Uh, our uh, tables, we have our membership tables with Nancy DeLuca, Joanne uh, Duhamel, England, and Worcester Drury is manning the, uh, the new uh, memberships today where they're uh, just uh, greeting all our members coming in today. So this is our grilling uh, area right now for the cookout. We have uh, Chef Jack DeLuca on grill today and uh, Actually, really, really, uh, he's all fired up, it says right there. Uh, but uh, he and Nancy uh, did a great job getting all the, uh, everything for the, uh, the cookout. So that's a big, big job, trust me. And uh, Jenny Moore Murray, uh, Moore Murray right here, uh, handling everything else as the assistant chef uh, all day long. And look at the, oh, steamy hot dogs, uh, just fabulous, fabulous. So um, enjoy all the food, come on down today, but you're going to see this probably this week, so you're going to... You're going to miss it if you've see missed what you have missed it. Yeah, you see what you missed. This is for our members, our members only. But thank you very, very much. All right, everybody, it's time for your OA Sports Recap. All right, guys, it's that time of week again. Welcome to your weekly ECAT Sports Recap. 
We're going to get it started with the results from last Thursday, September 14th, where all Tiger teams were on the road. All of Rams football traveled to Archbishop Williams, and they lost 35-16. to They moved to 0-2 on the year. Field hockey made the trip to King Philip Regional, but they lost 5-1. to Finally, golf made their way to Franklin Country Club, but they were defeated as well, 152-163, to so tough start for the Tigers. On Friday, September 15th, the Tigers got back on track as boys soccer took on King Philip at home and they won 2-1. Joey Carney was the hero in this one as he netted both goals. Coach Sylvia got her girls back on track as field hockey got a big win, 10-0 against the Weymouth Wildcats. A shutout for senior goalkeeper Olivia O'Rourke in the defense. Volleyball unfortunately couldn't keep the home streak going as they were swept three sets to zero. Girls soccer and golf were on the road Friday but the road blues continued as each took losses. Girls soccer lost 4-0 at KP, while golf lost to KP as well, 158-169. After the weekend, the Tigers got back into action on Monday, September 18th, when volleyball ended the road blues. They went to Mansfield and swept it, 3-0. Junior Claire Cavolius led the squad with 26 assists, and Rachel Fleischman recorded 17 digs on defense. Field hockey was meant to play, but rain postponed it to the following afternoon. So on Tuesday, September 19th, field hockey won their road makeup game 4-0 over Mansfield. O'Rourke had another shutout. Golf shared Mansfield as their opponent, but they took a brutal one-stroke loss, 164-163. On the soccer pitch, girls soccer was in Mansfield and they won 2-1. With just 12 minutes left, freshman Brooke Dean found the back of the net from just a few feet out to give the Tigers the lead and ultimately the win. The boys' soccer team played Mansfield at home, and they earned a hard-fought 1-0 win at Moscato Stadium. With two minutes left in the first half, senior Josh Ventura scored off a corner kick from his teammate Ryan Linares. Drew Hall served a shutout. Finally, on Wednesday, September 20th, golf hit the road and beat Foxborough 168-176. Congrats to the team on a big road victory. Meanwhile, volleyball lost a tough 3-2 match at home against Attleboro. Overall, not a perfect week for the Tigers, but I'm sure every fall team has something to build off of after their recent games. This has been your weekly ECAT Sports Recap. Thank you for watching. This has been Jack Ryan. And what do you call a deer with no eyes? And Joe Taft, to be honest, I have no clue. I have no idea. This has been Easton News. I don't get it.